welcome to another weave with me video. I am Sarah and today I'm going to do a little bit of tablet weaving, I was thinking. Uh, I'm definitely not a tablet weaving pro, but uh, I've been exploring this technique a little bit. I actually did it for the first time maybe two years ago or something. Uh, I found a couple of books on this technique at the Weaver's Guild that I I was part of, or the Weavers and Knitters Guild that I was part of when I lived in Queensland, Australia. And they had a library, which was wonderful. Uh, and I found some books on tablet weaving and I got really, really intrigued. I didn't know about this technique, but tablet weaving, for those who uh, don't know or haven't seen this, is a technique where you use little cards, tablets, um, square tablets with holes in the corners. Okay, one eternity later, I got the focus right. Um, so yeah, you use these little tablets that has holes in the corners and you thread the yarn, the warp yarn through these holes. And the, the um, uh, mechanism is that you turn the cards to create the shed. Uh, so it's really ingenious. It's a really, really old technique. Um, uh, it might be the oldest weaving technique. I'm not actually sure. Don't quote me on this. Um, but it's so cool that you can make this really intricate, beautifully patterned uh, band, like bands, with this very, very simple tool. Um, and initially I did a back strap so that you tie it to yourself and you tie it to something. Um, but uh, one of the main reasons for me to buy this uh, Inco loom uh, was that I wanted to be able to practice card weaving on it and just like set it up and take it out, put it aside uh, in a little bit of a easier way. I found backstrap uh, pretty pretty cool in the sense that it's so simple, the simplicity of the tools, but uh, this is more practical for me actually. Uh, so I've already started to set up the warp. Uh, yesterday I'm all about halfway, so I'm going to continue setting up the warp and hopefully start to weave if I have time for that. Um, so I'm setting up this really uh, pretty pattern that I found online uh, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So first I need to measure out the remainder of my um, warp strings, thread them in the right order through these cards and tie the cards onto my uh, inkle loom and then the warp will be ready to go. So what I have here is four uh, warp threads that needs to go into this uh, card for each card. So I thread one uh, warp thread into each of these little holes. And the holes are marked with the letter A, B, C and D. So I have to pick the right color warp thread for each letter. But I mean for this card I had only black thread so that's quite easy. But if you look at your patterns. I mean, I had one white thread here that needed to go into the last hole. So I looked at my pattern and I see that I have three black threads that needs to go to into A, B and C, and then a one white that needs to go into the D. And then I position the card so it's in the right starting position for when I start weaving with the A in the uppermost corner. And then I take my bundles of four threads and tie it into a continuous loop uh, so that I, if I tie it to my loom, I couldn't at once the warp around my loom. So since I have it on my loom, I tie it, uh, these little bundles together so that I can advance the warp forward.
Something that is also important to check when you are threading your tablet cards is to check whether they should be threaded from the front to the back or from the back to the front. So that is whether they should be threaded as a S or a Z card. Uh, so that is uh, actually the same thing as when you're talking about a S or a Z spun yarn for those of you who are familiar with uh, S or Z spun yarns, maybe through weaving or as spinners because this relates to the direction of the twist of the yarn. So the thing about tablet weaving that is quite different from other types of weaving, uh, which is quite interesting and is reminiscent of spinning yarn, is that as you are weaving, you're actually introducing twist into the, um, into the band or the, the weaving that you're making. So it's not only about the twist in the yarn, but you're actually introducing some new twist into the uh, weaving that you're making, which is one of the reasons why this uh, type of weaving is uh, really holds up really, really well, uh, because it kind of becomes a little bit of a rope-like structure in this sense. Uh, and this will make more sense as you see this uh, gets woven. But uh, when you thread the cards, uh, uh, it will matter how you thread them, whether you thread them from the front to the back or the back th uh, to the front, will matter for the direction of the twist that you will be introducing as you are later twisting the cards when you are weaving with them. Uh, so the, the, it doesn't only matter how you're turning the cards, but actually how you're threading the cards. Uh, and the way to check uh, whether you have threaded your cards correctly, whether they are a Z or a uh, S threaded card, is to um, uh, look, if I hold them up, uh, whether the threads come in uh, and follow the spine of the letter S or the letter C. Uh, so what I do is to see if uh, the card is threaded from the left to the right, like the spine of a letter S, or from the right to the left, like the spine of the letter C. So this is what works for me, at least. It's time to get weaving. Okay, I'm kidding. Uh, I'm actually almost done with this project at this point that you're looking at um, because the winter months are really dark up in, in the north and I was really struggling to get some uh, daylight where I could film uh, when I was weaving. Um, so uh, this is the towards the end of the warp of this project. The process for weaving tablet weaving bands is quite similar. Uh, for weaving other bands like inkle bands. It's just the changing of the shed that is different. So the weft placing and the tightening of the warp um, of the weft is similar to get the nice neat edges. So kind of that technique is similar for me for weaving all types of bands. Um, but the uh, shed is changed by turning the cards either clockwise or counterclockwise. And this uh, changes can change us throughout the pattern uh, and it can also change um, that you uh, turn some cards clockwise and other cards counterclockwise depending on the pattern for more advanced patterns. But this pattern is a really nice and beginner friendly pattern even though it looks like I love this pattern because it looks so nice and cool and uh, like it would be complicated but it is actually a super beginner friendly pattern. You turn all the cards in just one direction and you just keep turning them in that direction. Uh, so it's really the sim most simple version of a tablet weaving pattern and it just turns out really really nice. Um, so as you can see I just keep turning the cards in the, all cards same direction uh, shed by shed. So for the tablets you have actually four uh, possible sheds with all with the four corners which is pretty cool. Um, so in more advanced patterns 
you can switch this up and have them turn in different directions. And this is where um, having cards in different colors uh, will be really helpful. Yeah, so this is the final band. Uh, spring is finally arriving here in Scandinavia and that also means that the sun is now constantly in eye height. So I have a little bit of a hard time seeing what I'm doing. But this is the final project. I have a band that's about, I'd say, I haven't measured it, but I'd say it's maybe a meter and a half. I have no idea what to do with it, but I really, really like it. This is a, such a lovely pattern. So the pattern is Vines uh, from Catherine over at Tabling Weaving in Practice. Uh, so you should check out both her homepage and her YouTube channel. Um, I will leave the link uh, in the description uh, to both. Uh, her resources is invaluable for, uh, I found for learning uh, tablet weaving and uh, I think this pattern is so lovely uh, it really makes you um, it really makes it able for you as a beginner to weave something that feels like so pretty and so professional somehow uh, which is so much fun um, you can see like there uh, this pattern has these uh, like swivel points where because the pattern has keeps turning in uh, one direction uh, and since you by turning the cards in one direction uh, you keep building twist in your warp and uh, this twi uh, twist will build and build and build and if you unless you have little swivels um, that you have put into your little wall warp bundles your warp threads will twist on each other and you have to at some point start to turn in the di uh, other direction to untwist your warp threads from each other uh, so this is what these points are that you can see in some places in the band is where i had to start turning in the different direction in the other direction because i don't have swivels um, but i don't think that that matters much um, so that is something that comes with these i mean other other pat patterns that it ha is built out of um, uh, the idea that first you turn four, four turns forward and four turn turns backward, eight forward, eight backwards. They kind of build this t twist and untwist motion into the patterns. But since this pattern being so beginner friendly, just like keep turning, you don't have to keep track of that. You just have to turn as long as you can until you just really can't turn anymore and then you just keep turning backwards. Um, the other thing I want to mention about my tablet weaving is my cards. So I'm gonna fetch those. So I am weaving with these plastic cards. So you might have seen that other weavers have um, cards that are made out of old playing cards, cardboard, like store-bought card. Like uh, I know that many of the kind of producers of weaving tools make tablet weaving cards, or you can make your own using cardboard and things like that. Uh, I have plastic cards that you saw in the previous clips. And these cards, um, my husband has made for me uh, using his 3D printer. And I love these cards. Um, what is so nice about these 3D printed card is that they're thin and, and flexible, um, but still durable. And I can make more as I please. I can also, by changing the plastic in the 3D printer, uh, make different colors if I want. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, if you want to have uh, patterns where some cards turn one direction and other cards turn another direction, it can be quite practical to have cards in different colors. Um, I used, I downloaded from Thingiverse, which is a site where you can get all sorts of uh, 
um, pad patterns for 3D printing, um, uh, a tablet weaving card um, that I used as a base for these, but then I have modified them um, and changed them to what I wanted and I've added the, um, the letters, the A, B, C and D, uh, because they didn't have those and to have those. I don't know if I still have the file. I should probably also I should upload this file uh, in case anyone else wants them uh, because I've also printed these pack packets uh, for friends before and, and given them away as gifts. Um, so they are quite practical. These little 3D printed cards. Um, so that's what I use for my tablet weaving, very cheap production costs as well. Um, so yeah, I think that's what, that was all I wanted to say about my little tablet weaving venture. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And uh, check out Catherine's tablet weaving resources and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.